I use that mallet down there on the table and beat this son of a bitch right here out of the way. So Just for the shits and all oh, the giggles. Let's get this damn thing soldered up. Tired of looking at it. What's up, guys? It is July the 19th, Monday. July the 19th. And I have pulled up to do another commercial repair. I've got a five ton split train heat pump that I need to replace the indoor coal on. Um, got to work off a 10 foot ladder today. So that's going to be swell, right guys? Not really. All right, let's get into it. Okay guys, this is where your boy is working today. ahead and put my plastic down because y'all know how it is when you change indoor coal you're gonna have juices and water and everything else my unit is way up here guys it's all the way up there actually the indoor coal is in line with that damn light right there so that's gonna be fun uh the boss man gave me this uh, stuff here to work with that you don't have to solder with the old compression gun we'll see how that works okay guys I got the old coal out and the new coal in and of course you see where I have to make my connections I gotta get the that's actually like a inch and an eighth but it's going into a seven eighth so that's why I cut that piece back so maybe I can get it to go in my new coil, which is seven eighths. And then I got my, my other three eighths piece of copper line set. And uh, got to attach the drain, drains actually. And uh, even the auxiliary, I had to actually cut through this pipe here and slide the whole damn auxiliary pan to the left and then get a hammer. Uh, actually, what did I use, y'all? I think I used that mallet down there on the table and beat this son of a bitch right here out of the way. So I, it would, this threaded rod here wouldn't be in my way from getting the coal out. Cause, and I, I mean, it, it literally was like right here and I had to move it what that, that much you know, probably about almost 10 inches or so. I had to beat it crooked just so I could get the old coal out and get the new one in. But I got it in and uh, wasn't well, easy, but I did get it in. So now I got to finish uh, attaching all the good stuff to it. Right? All right, guys. Thermal trap spray over here. Just for shits and giggles. That is a flared fit for the equalization tube for the TXV expansion valve. So we're gonna I'm gonna make sure I don't get that too hot. Just for the shits and all oh, the giggles. Let's get this damn thing soldered up. I'm tired of looking at it.
see it did get a little hot back there on that flare so that's why i put that thermal trap jelly on there okay and we looks like we got it pretty much all the way around the pipe i'm gonna go for the liquid line next okay be the easy one guys that one had a little bit of oil in it in the line on the liquid line so it wanted to fire up with me uh, so let's see if i got that bad boy or not uh, oh yes sir may i have some tea I believe I got it, y'all. Look pretty good. Look good from y'all's house anyway, don't it? Uh-huh. No, it's good. It's sealed up good. But it did. I did have a little issue with the oil. With the oil wanting to, um, wanting to, you know, fire things up for me. Make a little blowtorch thing happen. All right. Got it, guys. We're going to move on to the next thing. I'm back out here at the condenser. You know, y'all know what the next step is after you saw the stuff up. You gotta come put nitrogen on, right? So I got my, got, oh my goodness. Sorry about that, guys. Got my gauges hooked up. All right. Got the, got the, got a, got a, got a, got a, almost a pretty much full tank of nitrogen. And let's put some, let's fill this thing up with nitrogen. Once we get up to about, I don't know, 350, 400 PSI, I'm going to go back up there and I'm going to check, see if I got any leaks. And it's always a good idea when y'all checking for leaks, guys. Don't just, don't just check your solder joints. Check the factory, um, check behind the factory because a lot of times factory, they be making mistakes. It might be a Monday or a Friday, okay? And check check the factory uh, flares and make sure they ain't leaking because I found that on a lot of jobs too. Okay, that's a beautiful thing right there, ain't it, y'all? Especially when you had a rough time on a getting into the refrigerant system, changing indoor coal. That is a good thing when you got your vacuum pump running. Jesus, that means we didn't have no leaks and. Uh, we're on a downward spiral of things now. I got to go put all the uh, drain lines back together. And, uh, I got to put the pan switch back in, slide the auxiliary pan back into place, and got a bunch of things to do. I think I got to get some armor flex, you know, and put it around. I think it's only like four or five inches that I need to get to insul finish insulating in that suction pipe. Uh, just little things, but we're on a downward spiral now. Downward, downward spiral. So, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Oh! Finished uh, putting this armor flex on here. Should have worn an eighth inch line. Just tidying up. Just tidying up a little bit. Now I need to put some cork tape, this stuff right here. And uh, I'm gonna put it on there to insulate the TXV sensing bulb. So we, so the TXV can properly meter the refrigerant read that temperature of the suction pipe here this stuff's really easy to work with 
just kind of goop it on there kind of like tar just want to make sure that it's making a good bond with the uh, with the pipe and that's really all you got to do that's the whole purpose behind it and once you've done that you feel like it's in there and connect to the pipe and that's it just like that guys next thing we're gonna have to work on is this drain here yeah we got actually three drains to hook together but first well actually next thing is I'm gonna slap this door on and then we'll do the drain and we're gonna be getting pretty close to being done I've had my vacuum pulling for probably about an hour now so it'd be about ready okay guys got the doors back on all right Got the uh, PVC straightened back out, put back together, and no, I didn't put a clean out on it because I didn't. I was tired. I'm tired of messing with this shit. To be honest with you, uh, I, and and I would have had to do a lot more repipe work too because of the way it's tied in here. So I just went on out with it. I mean, they got a trap that they made. You know, I just used old shop back and maintenance to come. And uh, then I just capped this off because we didn't we didn't need that one. It was going over here to this higher one on the old one. Hell with that shit. We don't need that. And I put, of course, our auxiliary drain back together. And so the PVC drain from the auxiliary pan all the way back to the coil pans back in there. Got the doors back on and secured. Liquid line, suction line, soldered in, no leaks. And got the uh, one and an eighth inch suction pipe, put a little more uh, insulation on it there so we're not leaking outside of the pan and on a ceiling tile or something. All right, guys. I put the, cut the disconnect back in the own position and ready to go charge this bad boy up. Okay guys, I uh, finished pulling my vacuum and charging the system up uh, to make things a little bit less expensive for the customer uh, at this church. Uh, what, we, what we did is we went with 421A and uh, got it fully charged back up. And you know 421A pretty much, might as well say, uh, mimics uh, 22 pressures. And it's pretty hot inside there. We're looking at about, what, 70, 75 on suction over about 315, 315. Uh, our suction pipe, she is sweat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And went ahead and applied my stickers so we know not to... Not to slap 22 in there with the 421. Hey, all right, guys. I'm gonna have to say that this one here is in the bag. All right, guys. 